Ian Hood, welcome to the Futurum Tech webcast interview series. Excited to have you here. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, it's great to have a chance to chat to you. This is part of a, a multi-webcast series that we're doing uh, with Red Hat, focusing on a bunch of different edge applications. So really glad I had the chance to talk to you. You, Ian, are the uh, chief strategist in your, in your business unit. Um, give a quick introduction. Uh, I'd love to you know, explain a little bit about what that is, what that role is, and, and what you do day in and day out over at Red Hat. Well, certainly. So kind of what I do is um, I work across all of our industries, <clears throat> telco, financial services, healthcare, industrials, and it's really about um, working with our customers to provide them guidance on both business and technology strategy to take advantage of open source technology, of course, being Red Hat, um, on how that improves their business and brings more value to their customers. Love it. Nice consolidated answer for a very big job. And the industry uh, lens has grown rapidly. We're seeing so much more focus on tech, trying to address all the different needs of different industries. And that's something that I'm going to love to get a little bit more of your take on, because it sounds like it's something you do every day. But let's start with a, with a little bit of that broader lens. You know, what are the big security challenges that you're seeing as it relates to edge computing solutions? Well, really, the, the big challenges are the fact that we've gone from a heavily centralized architecture to a distributed architecture. So like everybody says, we expand the surface area and the number of devices, the complexity, and basically we just scaled this whole problem up to a much larger extent. And we're trying to now secure many more things across many more different technologies, all the way up and down the stack from the hardware at the bottom, all the way to the applications at the top. So when you talk about edge security use cases, how do you explain those to, the, to your clients' markets across different industries? Well, it's, there's sort of two ways to kind of look at this problem. I don't actually think of security as its own specific use case. You could take it down that road if you wanted to, to say, okay, let's go secure this edge device, right, as a use case, right? But I look at it as I really need to secure my entire environment from the time I actually go, you know, consume the hardware, the software, build the application, then go deploy it at the edge. So it's a, a complete approach, you know, that you have to do to make this happen as compared to a use case that says, let's go secure the applications, you know, and add antivirus or cybersecurity, you know, applications to those, or let's go put IPsec tunnels in here to go solve this problem, or let's go meet the security compliance rules of NIST or, you know, the, the federal government, uh, FedRAMP. Um, there's many ways to kind of slice it up into very small use cases. We tend to look at it as an end-to-end -end problem, right from the time you start developing something to the time you actually deliver a service on top of it. Yeah, so I agree with that. I think security is a bit more of a macro and an overlay. And so it's something that organizations need to be thinking about. And that's why many organizations, by the way, Ian, have a CISO or some sort of chief security that works in tandem and in parallel with that chief information officer or that person that's leading the, the deployment of the applications and the business because these two things do kind of run horizontally together. But of course, every application has a security consideration. Uh, as data continues to proliferate, it becomes an even bigger thing, right? Right, because the because the real thing is how do I protect both the data, you know, so the people the right people have right access to the right you know in, information, and this is where we're sort of changing the rules in the game, right? The rule used to be that you kind of had a wide open system and you kind of locked it down, you know, piece by piece, you know, solely secured it. Well, now we go the other way around. We don't trust anything. We basically it's all locked down to start with. That's the default, right? And nobody has access to anything and you can't actually get access until you've been authorized to do so, whether it's identity, your application, role-based access, all those kind of things are now blocked until you actually open things up and change you know, the way you do things. So that changed the entire approach to a much better, more secure way to start from, at a better posture, and allows you to actually Im improve the whole thing from the time you actually go consume it you know, from a hardware or software vendor. Absolutely. So you're out there, you're talking to uh, customers across many different industries, what are you finding? What are you recommending? What are you saying when it comes to best practices for edge security and compliance? Um, kind of what we're saying is that um, the the first thing is to kind of make sure, as I said, the entire supply chain is secure. So make sure you're getting design, you know, you're actually getting secure images from people, you're running your um, scanning on the, the images that you get from them. And before you even actually put into your application pipeline to actually go, you know, build this application and deploy it somewhere, you've actually kind of gone through that process of making sure that it is secure in the first place. So that's the first thing is to start from the application in 
and then work through the role-based access models to let the right people, the right applications have the right access to the right things and the right data. That's the next portion, portion of the puzzle. Um, and then it's really about ensuring that everything that you can do from a connectivity perspective is encrypted at the right levels, right, across the network. And that's actually where we're changing kind of the game a bit now is that we've all been kind of locking down the network with IPsec tunnels. And now we want to kind of say, you know what, the network's getting kind of complicated, building firewalls and all these kind of interesting, you know, technologies to secure the network. We need to actually have to step it up a notch and secure it at the application layer through things like Mutual TLS to support that problem. So if I asked you about the capabilities, then so I'm hearing encryption, I'm hearing some new methodologies for, for streamlining and simplifying all of, you're sort of unwinding the spider web that's become ITSEC, right? I mean, it's become so complex and the edge and the volume of data, the volume of devices is only going to make it more complex. So best practice, somewhat you're saying is to simplify, like what are those capabilities and requirements that are going to enable that? So the, so the first things are <clears throat> that you've got to have you know, immutable software as an operating system that you can kind of separate, you know, the applications and processes from each other. Um, then you've got to have things like namespaces to separate and isolate things. So there's sort of basic foundational tools you've got to have um, and things in the world of Kubernetes to kind of separate things. But the other technology you're going to need to bring to the bring to bear is the ability to kind of separate <clears throat> the applications at a layer above the network, right? And do this at layers, <clears throat> you know, layers above layer three and four, you know? and allow you to separate those applications and enable the applications to be securely communicating to each other in a, in a manner across those different edge clouds going from a centralized cloud to multiple edge clouds at a higher level than we currently do. Because what we're finding is our customers are having to build all these and reconfigure them all the time, all these different collections of masses of IPsec tunnels, massive you know, you know, poking pinholes and firewalls every time they turn around, those kind of things that makes the operational challenge much more complicated. So we're trying to you know, eliminate some of that challenge by building that intelligence into the application layer above the network. Yeah, absolutely. There's going to be way too much. And as you create these little one-off accesses, you know, you're just creating so much opportunity for threat, for vulnerabilities uh, at scale. And of course you make it too complex for outsiders, you know, or um, when I say outsiders, new people that come into the, to working in the organization that are, how do you make it scalable, trainable? And of course, you got to think about things like automation, AI, ML, because that's going to be, those are going to be the key technologies. Well, actually, you just jumped into where I was going to go next, which is if you don't automate all of this stuff, <clears throat> right, and after the operators have to keep, you know, putting hands on keyboards to go change this stuff, you've got to actually make the entire operation as much as you can automated with humans doing, you know, what they have to do. You still have to have them involved, but automate as much as you can and apply policies with human intervention and apply your AI ML to, you know, to those in that manner. So it's a balancing act between the human and the AI uh, routines, but automation is kind of key to eliminating what you know, we find people make changes you know, by hand and that creates a security flaw right there. They make a change and all of a sudden something, you know, somebody got a, got a, you know, was able to hack in. Whereas if you had it automated, had it go back to the, you know, the secured mode, you've got a, a much more secure system. So if I say who should be responsible for this, then you know you could almost say the machine, quote unquote, the automation. But of course, you need smart people in the loop that are going to build these policies, build these systems, and make sure that they are are scalable and managed and, and secure. So, you know, in your case, who are you sort of recommending to lead these uh, edge security efforts? So it really is a combination of multiple teams, both the security officer and the design teams and the operation teams. It's, you have to kind of build that. Um, multi, um, I guess, team, you know, across diff different groups of how you build what we call the CICD automation for application development, you know, how you secure that, but also in the world of networking and deploying things in a virtual world for telecoms, the entire um, network configurations and how you actually deploy networks and configure those things, that follows the same GitOps kind of model of an automated reconfiguration of the network in a secure fashion so that that also takes that away from you know, humans being involved, except to apply the policies from the business perspective to apply those things and automate a recommendation to make a change if a security breach does occur. Because what are you doing at Red Hat? What's that? So, so what are you guys doing at Red Hat? You know, I always say proof is in the pudding. What are you doing? 
Yeah, so the proof is in the pudding. So the the, the proof really comes from um, Red Hat's building of how we build our platforms and how we build our software in the first place. We do follow that same um, approach I mentioned, the zero trust approach to building everything we do and making sure all of our software tools are built in that fashion. But we also bring a set of tools along with our platforms to automate and secure this deployment of these um, applications at scale on our platform and distribute it across the on-premise um, clouds as well as the public ones, because people are now wanting to build this, you know, this edge on-prem to some public cloud and also make sure that that data is secured. And another piece is to actually secure the data, you know, <clears throat> in motion as well as the data, you know, that's you know at rest. Right. So that's another piece of making sure that these platforms are secured for the data that's really kind of the gold you want to make sure you're protecting. But you've got to make sure the entire you know, system it runs on starts as the you know the foundation for that. But the tooling to actually do the automation and securing it with the right policies um, with tools is kind of how we how we put things together at Red Hat. Well, it's always great when you're building something that follows your own way of approaching it and, and meeting the stringent requirements that every company should have for securing their data and applications. Ian Hood, thank you so much for joining me here on the show. A lot of fun having this conversation. Well, thanks so much.